Hello, and welcome to the World Wanderers podcast. Today, Ryan and I are going to be interviewing um, an Austrian gentleman named Alex Krauss, who I met at a campsite in Glacier National Park last week when I was down there uh, hiking and visiting a friend. And we got talking, and he has actually been on his road bike for two and a half years, cycling all the way up from Ushuaia, Argentina. So he's here to share some of his stories and all that sort of thing about cycling from Argentina all the way up to Banff in Canada. So here's Alex. So today we've got uh, Alex Krauss with us. Um, I met him in Glacier National Park in Montana at a campsite, which is pretty cool. And we started talking and he's been on his bike for two and a half years. Yes, since April 4th, 2013. Which is pretty crazy. Started in Ushuaia in Argentina. He's made his way all the way up to Banff in Canada. <laughs> I'm so driven by bike. Do you know how many kilometers it's been? Um, not really. I was taking records, but I lost two of my speedometers. Uh, so I have to count it down. But it's around 25,000 kilometers. And how many countries? How many countries? That's a good question. <laughs> I, never, I think it's 18 countries, like... Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, Peru, Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, El Salvador, Pan. Colombia as well. Uh, Colombia. Did I not mention it? No, you uh, missed that. 11, uh, Guatemala, and Mexico, United States, and now Canada, Canada 15, no? Yeah, that's yes. crazy. Yeah, it's a massive amount <laughs> of distance. Yeah. Countries, yeah. So what, like, let's go back to, like, the start. When did you get the idea of biking all of the Americas? All right, like, like, there I have to go, like, back long a time. Yeah. yeah. So 2004, I was traveling, like, bike, uh, backing, uh, bike, backpacking. Yeah. Like, with my, just with my backpack. And I was in Australia, traveling around there, bought a car, and then went to New Zealand and did the same there, went to Asia, and when I came back, I was really low on money, and my cousin gave me the car of my grandpa, who passed away, mm. and this car was an old car, so after a year, the car was like, kind of, it broke down, and I didn't want to put money in, so I started to cycle. Yeah. And that was basically 2005, 2006. Okay. And since then, the bike is my transport. Mm -hmm. I don't have a car since then. So I always cycle from A to B, wherever I go. Yeah. yeah. And But back uh, in Austria, was that, would that you was do like long, back, long distance trips as well? Or no, is but just like around town? That came kind of like, um, I met like my neighbor. He's really big into cycling. And he had like he bought a new road bike, and he gave me his old one. So we started to cycle together. Okay. And when he was bringing like his kids like into bed, he came up and we had a few beers, and we were talking about traveling because he li loved traveling as well. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't do it really because of his kids; they were really young, so he couldn't travel with them. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, that was like kind of where all these ideas came about like cycling. Yeah. and traveling so then I was looking a bit more seriously into it and I saw oh there is like this touring world which I didn't had a clue before really and people cycle like, from A to B and over continents and yeah. there was one guy um, he started I think in the 60s or 70s yeah Tilman Waldthaler is his name he's a German guy Okay. And he he cycled around, and I had his book, and I was reading a bit in his book, and so that everything kind of happened from there on. Yeah. And then I bought my bike in 2008. And so when you bought that bike, it's like a long distance, really durable bike. But <laughs> was, were you planning the trip at that point? No, this trip not. Like I was planning to do like some touring but like more in Europe. Yeah. And then at the university, I had like a course with like a friend and she was from Germany. And then she said, I said to her one day, like, hey, I'm gonna go to cycle a bit around Europe. And she was like, yeah, I want to cycle back home to Germany actually. So we were, 
I never cycled before long, long distance and she didn't. Yeah. So we were saying, yeah, let's go together. Like, it's better to <laughs> be together, kind of. <laughs> go to them. So that was my together. first tour and that was 2008. For three months in Europe, like Eastern Europe, German, Eastern Germany. Oh, yeah. cool. And that's how it started the first time. And then in 2010, nobody was willing to cycle with me, so I was cycling by my own to Spain. Wow. And like... So from Salzburg to... From Salzburg over Germany, Switzerland. Yeah. And actually I wanted to visit a friend in Luxembourg, but that never happened. So I came into France, north of France, and then in... It's called Normandy yeah. in French, and then Bretagne down into Spain and there is like a, it's an old pilgrim way in Europe yeah. it's called Camino de Santiago oh, yeah. Yeah. so I was like after a while I was oh I can I'm, I'm coming closer closer it's possible to do it yeah and I only had two months time like summer holidays at university yeah so I was like okay I do that and I went down to Spain to Santiago de Compostela and then back again. <laughs> oh, wow. And you can cycle that road? Um, you're not really on the walk, walking part most of the time, okay. but like kind of close. Kind of beside it? Yeah. <laughs> I usually, I I take my way always, kind of. Like, I'm not sticking to routes, really. <laughs> like, if I don't like uh, a route idea, I just go another way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were talking yeah. about this when we were in Montana because there's a lot of people who have like no trespassing signs and they're like, we'll photo gun at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> did like, you in Montana have to, or like in the States, did you take some like private um, I was direction? like in Montana actually, my GPS directed me to like a path up into the mountains to the Great Divide Trail again. Yeah. Con uh, Continental Divide Trail. Were you again. on the Continental Divide Trail? I've been on and off since Colorado. Okay. But like the Continental Divide Trail doesn't go into Yellowstone and Tetons and not into Glacier National Park and I wanted to see that so I was going off again and then jumped on the Continental Divide again. Yeah. So I was in Boulder, Montana and I wanted to go into the Continental Divide again because I came from Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. and the GPS was directing me on a road like it showed on the GPS but there was no road and <laughs> like there was a road before and then suddenly I was up in the mountains and there was nothing anymore yeah, but was it like a trail? Uh, yeah it was like actually just like sack bush area <laughs> <laughs> so I went through there and then I had to cross a few fences and I thought, like, I'm now in private property, and there I was a bit worried about, like, you know, what will happen? But nothing happened to me. But a few days later in Kalispell, yeah. um, I was at a warm shower host there, and they told me, like, uh, and if you need water or something, don't go in Montana on a private property because people would shoot sh shoot, and then ask questions. That was like a person from Montana who told me that. So I don't know how serious <laughs> that is. Later, yeah. I don't know how serious that is, but I saw one sign in Montana, and it said, like, uh, no tree passing, like, keep out, no tree, no tree Trespass, pa no, trespassing. trespassing. Yeah. Uh, survivors will be prosecuted. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> yeah. That's oh my good. gosh. And so, uh, yeah. what were you going to say? No, carry okay. uh, So then, after the Spain trip, was is this the first trip? Then? So, and then after my Spain trip, um, I told you that my friend is like a road biker, mm -hmm. and there is a group of people who, are, who do road biking, so I just came into the cycle, or like in this friend cycle kind of like these people who a group of uh, this group of cyclists and they go like in the spring to Italy to do one like rent a house and cycle a week oh, and cool. just just guys yeah. <laughs> cycling <laughs> eating beer drinking and wine drinking and that's it yeah. and there I met like Martin a guy he, who lives also in Salzburg and he was also into traveling and he traveled before like in South America like without bike and so after it took around a year so we planned around a year and we said yeah we want to cycle together 
And so that's how my cycling trip from South America started, kind of. I was with him before, like the yeah. first three months, but it didn't work out so well. And so we said, later, we go like our different ways. Well, what happened? Um, we went up, like his dad came, came over to Mendoza. Mm -hmm. So I cycled with him and his dad. And um, we were like in Salta, it's called. Yeah, we've been, we've been to Salta. We've been to Salta yeah. and there is a pass, it's called Paso Sico. There's Hama, like the main road to San Pedro de Atacama. Mm -hmm. And then there is another kind of dirt road, gravel road pass over to San Pedro de Atacama. And we've been there, San, San Antonio, what, what is it called? I forgot. De Cobre, I think. Okay. In the mountains of Salta. And we cycled there, and the next day, because the pass, we, when we arrived, we recognized the pass is closed for a few days because of snow. Yeah. And his dad and he, did, his dad actually didn't want to wait because he had a flight out of uh, La Paz, and they wanted to cycle the Saladio Uni, and I said, well, I want to cycle over this pass, and that was actually the plan, and I'm not going now by bus to Uni and stuff, so yeah. they decided to go to the Saladio Uni, mm -hmm. and I said, no, I'm not going, I stay here, okay. and I cycle on, and then he was cycling uh, kind of in front of me yeah. most of the time, and we never catched up because I had like a problem with my rim, and then uh, that took a, a while to to work that out. And and this time he was always like around 1,000 to 2,000 kilometers in front of me. Uh. Uh. And then when I was in Ayacucho, in like later, that's in Peru then, like nearly two months later, yeah. uh, I received the news that my grandmother died. So uh, for from like December 2013 mm. to... The beginning of March 2014, I flew home in this period for the funeral yeah. Yeah. and Christmas and everything. So yeah. I left my stuff in Peru and then uh, came back and started over yeah. where I left, like where I stopped, yeah. and then carried on by my home. And okay. he was going to Colombia. And that was he his, was just his journey America. to Colombia. Yeah. So when you started, had you planned to come all the way up to Canada? Yes, actually my first plan or the first plan was to go to Anchorage yeah. in Alaska. That's kind of the classical route people do. Usually people do it from Anchorage to Ushuaia. But also, like most people go from north to south for some reason. It's also on the Continental Divide Trail. Mm -hmm. Because it seems people. downhill when you're looking at it. <laughs> it seems downhill. I don't know why it is. And so not so many people go from south to north, but there are people who are going from south to north too. But most of the people go from north to south. And that's kind of a classic route, I guess, mm -hmm. or like these points like Anchorage to Ushuaia. Yeah. So that was the first idea, to go to Anchorage. Um, and then on the way, I... S you you meet people and they tell you, ah, oh, here, there is a nice place, or uh, you meet other cyclists and you cycle with them a while and they have, like, an idea of a route and you think, oh, that's good, I want to do this as well. So I was kind of sick. I started to zigzag around, not yeah. going, like, directly, because, like, if you go directly often, you are, like, on a main road. Mm -hmm. It's not so nice. And if you can go, like off-roads or like second second like smaller roads it's not so much traffic and mm -hmm. nice yeah. landscape like nice views and so i decided to take m my time and the goal what i had before like reaching anchorage was disappearing a bit yeah so yeah. i was just yeah, i wanted so to have a good time like, yeah, yeah the destination it's more it's about not, what you're doing on your journey yeah like go coming to places and just be there and now I'm here in Banff, and I recognize that it's not so far actually anymore, and I could do it if I, if I want to. That's crazy, because it seems so far to me. Yeah, it's pretty far, but it's not <laughs> like... thinking about Banff to Jasper, I'm like, oh man, that would kill me. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like that it's not doable, you can mm -hmm. do it. It's like hard, I think, yeah. now, because I fly out of Vancouver on the 5th of October. Yeah. So that's a short period now. But it's 
basically do that. And now I'm kind of, there is like a lot of woods here, so not so many things after Jasper to see. Yeah. Kind of. Be of you course you have a lot of to see, but yeah, nothing it's kind else. of remote and you I have to go a in and stuff. Definitely. And a lot of forest. <laughs> So it's like, okay, I could like just cycle, 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 cycle yeah. for three weeks. And so no. throughout your travels, like on average, how many kilometers do you cycle a day? Uh, around, around 88 at the moment. Wow. It varies between 75 and 88. I think that's like the average. Yeah. Who would, how much time is that? On the saddle? Yeah. I mean, like on the saddle between like five to seven hours. But then you have to add around two to three hours on top of it. Like that's with breaks and taking pictures and looking for water or food. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a like a, depends. Sometimes I have a, in total a four hour day. Yeah. And most of the time it's six to eight hours, I guess. Yeah. Around that. That's the day like, like being active. Yeah. And do you, like, you've been here for a couple days, but that's kind of just because of a bike problem. Are you, like, do you try to move, like, every single day, or are there spots where you like to hang around? At the beginning, I tried to move every day wow. and, like, pushing it. Um, but then, like, Martin's dad came over to Mendoza, so I was three weeks before he came there, so we stayed three weeks in Mendoza. And we did like day tours or like for a couple of days into the mountains around Mendoza in Argentina. Mm. And then, you should like, yeah, I have both. I have both. I need like breaks as well. Yeah, yeah. for sure. You can imagine. Uh, like, so it's like the physical. At the beginning, I was more pushing it, and now I'm like, mm. I'm cycling a few days, and then I need a day break if it's nice somewhere or mm -hmm. whatever. Is your body, like, held up fine? Uh, I had this and that issues, but I think I'm quite all right. Yeah, yeah you must be in pretty good shape. <laughs> like, actually, I was in better shape when I came out to start the tour. Really? Yes, because, like, I probably, like, I can go a long time now, mm -hmm. but now my maximum kind of things are a bit gone. Uh, okay, so you, you know, like if you if you out. do road biking, you go for two hours, for example, yeah. and you push it to the kind of limit as yeah. you can. If you're into road biking or mountain biking, yeah. But here, I'm surviving on the bike often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of, if it's uphill, I just want to get up. Yeah. With all the weight and everything, so I'm like constant, constantly pedaling. Yeah. But I'm not really going to my maximum okay. because when I do this. I'm done after two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm... Like, my maximum power is a bit gone, but my long-term... How do you say? <laughs> like, like, long-distance. Like long-distance. Long yeah. That's, that's pretty good at the moment. Yeah, yeah I can imagine. <laughs> but I was also, like... Because it's, like, really... I do a lot of... It's, like, one movement, kind of, mm -hmm. on the bike. And I used to do, like, hiking a lot back home and, like, kind of workout and stuff. So that's not happening so much anymore. It's just, like, the same exercise same. and the same yes. movements for your legs. Yeah. yeah, I guess that makes sense. Your body gets used to anything you do yeah. continuously. And adapt to um, Did you learn Spanish while you were in South America? I, yes, like, my, my Spanish didn't exist, really, yeah. when I started out. I, I knew a few words like gracias and me llamo and stuff like this. Yeah. But yes, I learned on the way, but it's not really good, so I can get along, but I couldn't speak a lot in English. Yeah. I, I was just wondering because, like, we traveled South America for six months, and I found, especially at border crossings and stuff, it was just so much easier knowing a little bit of Spanish. Mm -hmm. And I feel like crossing up border on a bike must bring up some questions for them no like the border crossings were never a problem actually okay. for me yeah in central america they sometimes one two times it was like not really a problem but you have to pay and you don't know if it's really if it's corruption now or if yeah. you have to pay uh it, it 
it worked out that I had to pay it actually it was not corruption but all the other border crossings no worries at all I was fine you know, it was all fine yeah. what about like going into the states like they have pretty hardcore border <laughs> no <laughs> no I was thinking like the United States because like I have a six month I had or have a six month visa for the states, mm -hmm. which is for multiple entries, and I had to do like all this questioning on the internet. It took me four hours to fill out a form. They wanted to know every about everything about me, about my education, about my parents, about my um, financial background, everything. Yeah. And everyone says, ah, if you come to the states, it's really hard, like border control. Yeah. yeah. But if you come from Mexico, they were like I walked in and I was first confused because I was thinking there is like the Mexican border before, where well, I get exit immigration, where yeah. I yeah, exit immigration, where I get my stamp, and then I go to the American border and I get my stamp. But no, that that was all in one building, and I just was on the American border, and so I don't have an exit stamp <laughs> from Mexico. Oh. Actually, they didn't give me a stamp in the states for the states. Interesting. So then it was two minutes. Like I gave him my passport. He looked at it. I, I, it's all good. Yes, it's all good. And then they X-rayed my penis, and that's it. I was x -ray Like my my pack, my bag. Oh, your bags. Yeah. That's it. No, con no body control. No questioning. Nothing. Because even like uh, like when I gone back into Canada um, on other trips, they'd be like, "Let's do and be like, oh, you've been to." so many countries like what are you doing mm -hmm. why are you traveling so much I would have kind of thought that like as someone on a bike who has been like biking yeah. like, what are you doing in all these places no not not, a, not for me nothing no questioning nothing and when I came to Canada I was a bit concerned because I didn't have a stamp in my passport how that works out like with the American exit yeah kind of thing because there but, isn't American exit right? but when I came, there was just the Canadian border. There is no American yeah, so control. In Canada and the U.S. It's it's illegal to n not allow a citizen out. Right. Okay. So like, the, I Canada can deny you entry, but the U.S. can't prevent you from leaving. I yes. I didn't hear that. And it's the same in Canada. So they can't prevent me from leaving, but another country could like prevent me from coming in. Okay, I didn't hear that. Yeah. So there was no control from the American side, and I just came over like Waterton Lakes yeah so there was just like the Canadian border and it's just open in the summer and he asked me a few questions like if I have weapons with me but I think he asked everyone the same questions yeah I got asked the same thing coming and to Canada <laughs> then I was here so the states were and I had no control no police control nothing in the states even mm -hmm. like after the Mexican border like 30 miles around 30 miles or 50 kilometers mm -hmm. there is like the border control checkpoint and they didn't check me they were like it was a desert area so they were like do you have enough water <laughs> and please go a bit off the side of the road because the cars the, the cars can pass and then he asked me if I have enough water and that's it no oh. checks at all hmm. nice. yeah that is nice so when you started in Ushuaia like how were you feeling about biking for so long were you like a bit nervous at all? Like the idea was actually to bike one and a half years. Yeah. Now I'm two and a half years on the road. So the idea was to go to um, Anchorage in one and a half years. That was. And it was idea. more about like just getting up to Anchorage? Yes, then. it was more like yeah, cycling and see what happens. And I don't know, I thought it's like not so far. <laughs> <laughs> But there is a lot of stuff between, and then things happen on the way. I, I was getting sick as well once, and like, yeah. I was gonna ask happened. you that because like we both got super sick in Bolivia. Uh huh. Did you you did get sick while you were in South America? Yeah, I had like once I had a tooth problem, okay. so I had to go to a dentist. Yeah. And then I had like an ear problem. <laughs> I had to go to check that. And then I had like a few times like kind of flu, I guess. Yeah. But not really bad. And then when I came to Central America, I had like uh, parasites. Yeah. 
and that was not so good and I think I still have them actually <laughs> because like I took three times medicine but two times it didn't work out and the third time I took it here in, uh, in the States yeah but sometimes I have this feeling you know you yeah. can tell if something is good in your body or not and I have this feeling it's not how, it's it's not really bothering me but it's like kind of yeah I think I still have them yeah <laughs> Did you ever have, like, problems with elevation? Elevation? In, like, Bolivia or um, Chile? Yeah. yeah, I wanted to do, like, the Chimborazo in Ecuador, the volcano. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I went up there, up to 5,500 meters, and then I had to turn around because of the altitude. That's pretty high. Yeah, that's pretty that's high. That's very high. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really, like, by going down... I was suffering a lot. Like I, I was, that I didn't experience that before because, like, I like to walk up mountains and stuff. I know that when I go down, that I'm tired often. Yeah. Or like I, I want to be like down there or stuff. Yeah. But that was really like <laughs> working itself from stone to stone kind of thing. Yeah. It was uh, really a interesting experience. It makes you feel like so dizzy and just yeah, like, like really. Uh, like weak yeah really weak like yeah. Int- yeah I never had that actually before and afterwards like this mm-hmm. but that was like one point where I had to turn around otherwise like while cycling no I was pretty good at depth like for the you were fine across the pass from like Salta to San Pedro yes that was good because that's like a pretty high altitude that's there. also around 4,000 meters or so yeah yeah the highest I was like cycling was 4,900 meters did you cycle through the salt flats was that through the salt flats yes yeah like I took the Laguna route yeah and then through uh, the Salario Uni that's crazy and that to, you biked through to there. Bolivia. So, like, did, to you, did you start in like San Pedro and then go up? Is I, it kind of like the route that most of those tours take? Yes, it's like a kind of common cycling route as well. Oh. Uh, so, people come to San San uh, San Pedro, yeah. the Atacama, and then you go up the Paso Jama, like to Salta, mm-hmm. the paved road, mm-hmm. and. Like around, I don't know, I think if, I, I don't know exactly, 40 or 60 kilometers you go up and then there is a turn off into Bolivia okay. and then you are on the Laguna route. Okay. Like uh, Laguna Verde. Oh, yeah. Laguna the Calvieri. Like Lincancabur, the volcano, the high one. Yeah. And then there is this blue lagoon. Mm-hmm. You, you pass through there and then you come. I think that's the same route we took. We took a jeep, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of cheap tours yeah, there, yeah. yeah. But people cycle it too. And then I crossed like the Salar from south to north. Mm-hmm. Like you could, people cross sometimes from north, from west to east or east yeah. to west. And then I went to on the main road to Oruro and to La Paz. Okay. Yeah. Was that when you were, like was biking the salt flats? One of like the highlight moments or like where have been like the the coolest places or the places okay, where you've been like wow this is so amazing that I'm back in here like the Salah the uni was amazing because I was alone the whole time five hours on the Salah and it's just like till the horizon nothing yeah mm-hmm. the cycling I have to say was not so good because I was thinking it's flat but it's like all these hexagonals yeah, yeah. so it's like a bit bumpy like yeah, I think that would be... It's not really flat, <laughs> not actually. It's not to cycle over. Only if you go on the car tracks, they are, like, really flat. But if you're not on the car tracks, it's, like, a bit bumpy. Mm-hmm. And they have, like, sometimes it's wet in some areas, so you have to look that you don't break in somewhere. There are oh. some areas which, like, are with holes or a bit wet. Mm. But the cycling, the best cycling, hmm, a lot of... I don't know really, like, I really love the mountains in Peru and the Pampa in Argentina. Okay. Um, Utah. Utah. What is that? Utah, oh, Utah. In, in the United States. Um, I love desert areas actually to cycle in. Just because it's like super flat? No, not 
not really that because it's flat I don't know it's very remote usually it's silent a lot of silence mm -hmm. and it's warm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and no rain yeah yeah so I like that the only concern you have is the water you always need water and that's sometimes not so funny when you run out of water <laughs> You're in the but of it, I think. that's like planning a bit like so have you had moments where you were like out of water and Yes. Not very close to anything. Yeah, like I was kind of close, but in in Mexico, in the Baja California, and I was like on a trail, and I thought it's like just 60 kilometers, so doable in one day, and I just planned for one day, but then the road was so bad that I had to push most of the time, so 60 kilometers pushing is like... <laughs> takes two days instead of one day yeah. mm -hmm. and there were, were no springs and no water so I was running really low on water and like I had like this bit of water left when I arrived at like a little rancho range yeah. and they feeded me and gave me water and everything oh, but that was that, I was a bit desperate there you were you starting to like worry about yes I was like really I was so thirsty already but I knew I can't drink it all in once. I have to like just drink a little, little, little. Mm -hmm. That I have a little bit at least. So yeah, I had like all the time this dry mouth, and oh. I was a bit concerned. Yeah, that would freak me out. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I get thirstier too when I don't have that water. Yeah, it's like, it's like anxiety about it. And the crazy thing is, as soon as you start thinking about it, it's getting worse. It's so much worse. Yeah, like. You recognize, ooh, you're low on water, and then you recognize you're thirsty, and then it's always it starts to get in your mind, and you have to work that <laughs> that you get it out of your mind because you, I mean, you can survive one day, I guess, or two without water. Yeah. So it's not that you can't survive, but it's just in your head then, and, and this yeah, I think it's dry like feeling. Three days max. You don't have like that much time. Yeah. You don't have that much time, but in this case, I, I wouldn't like die I thought but yeah. like it's just not so good yeah and like I already thought about like just leaving my bike behind because pushing the bike is a lot of work mm -hmm. like it takes a lot of effort instead of, like just taking a backpack and walk yeah it's like easier because you don't have to bike and all the weight to push it mm -hmm. so I was already thinking about that <laughs> just leave then, the bike behind <laughs> then, yeah, I, I made it luckily yeah have there been any places where you were just like so tired where you're like, I'm just going to take a bus here? Or, yes. Yeah. I, I took a bus uh, because of my, well, when I was sick. Yeah. And I had like diarrhea for a month. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so I, I took a bus in, in like Panama. Yeah. And then I met a friend in Costa Rica. And in Costa Rica, I actually cycled just a little. Yeah. Because he's not a cyclist. And we were like going by car. Oh, okay. First we were going by bus, mm -hmm. but then uh, it was like, ah, that sucks. <laughs> like, it's not so, you're not so independent. Like, on the bike, I was used to be, like, really independent. I go where I want and stop where I want. Yeah. But with the bus, you have to rely on the schedule. The bus goes from A to B, and you want to go to C, which is a bit further, and then you need to take another bus, but there is no connection, and yeah. stuff like this. <laughs> So after two days, we said, ah, that sucks. And we were renting a car and going around to Costa Rica. Yeah, that sounds like a better option. Yeah. Um, in terms of, like, pre-planning for your trip, you were working beforehand, right? I was working, yeah. Yeah, what did I'm you do there. for work? Uh, I'm, like, I worked in a ho hotel. Okay, I think hotel hotel. Is. At the reception. Yeah. yeah. And so you saved some money to do your trip? Yes. And then you've just been, like, fine financially for the last two yeah. years? Yeah, that's cool. Is it pretty, like, low budget when you're cycling and camping? Yes, like, I avoid to pay, pay for accommodation normally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, like, on a $15 budget usually a day. Yeah. Um, like, US. And, like, all included, like, flights, because I was counting it a few weeks ago. It's around $30. Everything, okay. like a day, a day. If you oh, count wow. it down, like flights, 
and like stuff which I have to replace with the bike mm -hmm. and when I was sick to pay like for medicine and stuff I have insurance too yeah so for the insurance everything is like around 30 dollars and what's like what are you doing for food now that you're in like you're in the US and Canada where it's more expensive um I think it's a bit more expensive here in Canada what I recognized yet yeah at least especially here in Banff as well yeah here in Banff it's for sure more expensive. <laughs> yeah it's pretty expensive here but yeah when I can save for accommodation I have like $15 to spend on food which is quite alright a day so what do you normally like what would you what did you eat like yesterday here in Banff yesterday what yeah, did I for eat for $15 I feel like that's hang on yesterday we went uh what did I eat go to fresh what did I have yesterday? I had oats in the morning and then like my own stuff. Yeah. And then I went like to this Sri Lanka place um, oh, this where like there is a the mall court, yeah. and there is a laundry and the food court. Yeah. And they had like for 10 bucks like a lot of food. Yeah. Okay. That was my food. And then like a few snacks I had. Yeah. Um, now that you're getting like close to the end of the trip. Yeah. How how does that feel? Like, are you kind of looking forward to getting back to Europe and being off your bike every day, or yeah. are you kind of enjoying this more and worried about it ending? No, I'm not worried that it ends. Actually, I'm looking forward to go back home, and yeah, it's all good. I yeah, guess. it's gonna be weird um, not riding your bike every day, though. That, it's gonna be a bit weird, but like. Recently, like the last two weeks, I had this feeling that it's really good that I can go home. Yeah. Because like while traveling, you always change the place mm -hmm. and you always have to find the place. And then when you are on a budget, you have to look a bit seriously about accommodation and stuff. <laughs> so usually I free camp and then, yeah, you have it all in your head, you know, your budget and... Where to, where to sleep and stuff. So and it's always that always moving. You're like, always moving. Of where am I going to sleep kind in this new yeah. place? And like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I get that for sure from traveling. But I like, I mean, I love traveling and I have already new plans. But like for me, two and a half years, that's like, that's, that's enough. Yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, that is a really like, long time. Like, I want to do that again, I guess, like this long. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know there are a lot of places I want to see still in South America, especially. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably go back one day, but then maybe for two months in one area. Yeah. On and your bike still, do you think? I guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, no, I guess, yes. Do, I, do you I guess, like, like, do you think, I don't know, do you feel like doing touring on bicycle is like the way you like to travel the most yes that's the way I like to travel the most is it like the freedom or what do you think of, is it about it's bike touring it's the independence like you're really independent actually if your bike is alright <laughs> you're independent you can go wherever you want in your pace usually mm -hmm. and even if if you don't want to cycle something, you could hitchhike and put your bike on a truck yeah. or uh, take a bus. Mm -hmm. Or you can leave your bike behind somewhere and go hiking for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. You're really... In the, I, I wouldn't say it's freedom, really. It's more independent than independence. Yeah. And I guess, like, when you're on a bike, too, you're, like, the difference between, like, being on, like, a really long driving trip versus on a bike you're so much more like immersed in everything on a bike like I love the cycling even sometimes I hate it but like <laughs> the other day when I was in Mohab I was two weeks in Mohab with people and they let me borrow their scooters yeah so I was going around a bit Mohab the area with the scooter and the first day was really fun yeah it was a, a fast one and yeah <laughs> it's fun <laughs> but then a few days Afterwards, I was like, ah, it's a bit boring, you know. It's like you're faster, so the landscape is like moving pretty fast around you. And 
you're only doing this like you don't have like really exercise or something to do and mm -hmm. I don't know I've heard like cycling is better yeah I definitely noticed that too like I feel like I zone out in a car in a way that I don't if I'm like I don't know walking, biking or even riding. walking yeah. sometimes yeah, I mean that can happen while cycling as well that you zoom out kind of because you are so in this exercise thing mm -hmm. that you don't see or appreciate the rounding so much mm -hmm. but it's different with the bike it's very different like with the bike it's everything is slower yeah uh, I don't know you have time to take things in do you feel like because you were on your bike for a lot of like being in South America did you miss out on like seeing stuff there or do you feel like you got a better grasp of the countries than like somebody like Ryan and I who took uh, buses place to place but stayed longer I think I missed, the f like, I, at the moment, I don't feel that I missed anything, yeah. but I had on my travel feelings that I missed stuff because of the bike, because, like, it takes so long to get somewhere. Yeah. For example, I, I really wanted to see the Yucatan Peninsula, yeah. but I didn't went there because, like, it that, that would mean, like, three or four weeks to cycle mm -hmm. from Guatemala up to Belize and then over and then into Yucatan and down to Chiapas for example yeah so I didn't do that but I was like ah I want to do that kind of thing because it's so much longer yeah. when it's like versus so, hopping on a bike or hopping on a bus and being there in like eight yeah. hours so I was a few things I was like ah I want to do that mm -hmm. a few things with the bike as well which I didn't I couldn't do because of the weather yeah in some cases or because of it was too far away and then like you can do everything I guess but you need time then yeah. and money and I yeah. also wanted to kind of go further and cycle in the states I was looking forward as well to cycle here in North America yeah Did I was going to ask you how um, like in terms of maps and GPS so you have GPS on your phone Yes, I have, like, an application on my phone. Okay, and that's been, like, pretty accurate outside of that in uh, Montana, or...? It's pretty accurate in developed areas, or very accurate. Yeah. If you go, like, a bit remote, it's not that accurate, my my application. Yeah. Um, but most people I met, they have, like, how do you call it, Garmin? Garmin GPS? Oh, uh, yeah. Garmin GPS, okay. and yeah, Garmin, this is pretty yeah. good. Here is also the battery, goes pretty fast away. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Because, like, going through the salt flats must have been pretty crazy because it's just, like, the same landscape for so long. Yes. How did yeah, you make, how did you make your way through there? That was actually, yeah. I had, like, and this time so I didn't have a GPS. I was, like, navigating with compass and, like, maps. <laughs> but I didn't weird. have a proper map, so I had, like... A, a uh, map from Bolivia. Yeah, <laughs> Bolivian map. <laughs> and they mixed on. They mixed two, the two islands up. Like they were like there is like fish island, pescado, I think, okay. in, in, in Wahousi, if I remembered right. So on one island there is like a refuge, yeah. and on the other not. And I on this map it was like mixed up. <laughs> so I came to this island because like after a while. If you know, like, your compass and you know kind of where you have to go, you have to go north. Yeah. It's really easy there because, I mean, there is nothing so which can, bad. like, yeah. distract distract you. Yeah, like, or, like, disorient you. Disorient you, really? So I was going north and then I saw already the island, but I thought, like, it's, like, Isla Pescado, but it was the other one. Okay. And then I was not sure anymore, really, so I just went straight through yeah. instead of going to this island. The one where the refuge is, because I didn't. I plan that I come to this place, to this refuge, and stock up with water and everything, and I didn't have enough water. Oh no! To carry yeah. on two days, so I was like going directly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty crazy. Did you get like really lost at any points? Really like, outside of the cell flats, like anywhere else where you're just like. No, not really lost. Like. And I had to turn back, I think, two times because I was like, 
wrong or three times like I did like a wrong way and then I had to go back the same road to connect to the right way mm -hmm. but that didn't happen so often no? a few times yeah that's good then <laughs> I remember when we were going through the salt flats just being like wow I feel like my life's really in the hands of this jeep driver right now yeah. because if he was to like be like get out right now I'd be like Oh, of course, I have yeah. no idea where I am. <laughs> If you have to walk there, that's not so bad. <laughs> no. Yeah. Be fairly unideal. So you've been there too, right? Yeah. 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 We were um, in South America like a year ago, or just a year and a half ago mm -hmm. for six months. Yeah, so when were you in Peru? Uh, yeah. Peru May of was 2014? end of 2013. Okay. Like November, December. Yeah, and then, and then I came back in March, March, April, May, June. Okay. Okay. We were in. We were, uh, yeah, we were. We were in like, Peru in June of 2014. 2014. Yeah, we were in Peru in June of 2014. Yeah, because I was hiking in mountains, Cordillera Waiwash. Do you know that? No, which one's that? Like there is the Cordillera Blanca. Oh yeah. I know where yeah. else? And then there is like another mountain range, not mm -hmm. so far away from there. It's called, called Cordillera Waiwash. Okay. And I was hiking there and that was... Is that north of Lima? That's like north, north, east of Lima? northeast, yeah. You go like, I think, from Lima along the coast, 400 kilometers or so, and then you go over the first mountain yeah. range and then you come into... Okay. Yeah, we can get that north and through. It looks beautiful there, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we would mountains. have been in Peru at the same time, though. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Small world. It's like it we is. were on like a salt flat trip or something. That'd be weird to cross paths. Like. I remember yeah. seeing a biker when we were doing salt flats, and I was like, that is madness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, like when I was on the Laguna route, where I, you have been on the Laguna route, too. Yeah. yeah. Like... I felt like kind of like an animal because sometimes those jeeps stopped like further away and they took out the big cameras and <laughs> 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 like, what like there's, there's a llama yeah. there's, like, in the there's a llama oh there is a cyclist <laughs> that, I remember like, just like she said though like you'd see cyclists and be like what the hell what yeah. are you doing <laughs> but like there are like a few routes in South America, which are like classical routes, so a lot of people do it, and one is like the Salaria Uni, the Laguna route, or like Carretera Austral, mm -hmm. they call it, like in southern Chile. Okay. So there are like kind of a lot of cyclists there. Yeah. Some people come over and cycle this stretches, especially. Mm -hmm. Is it like of the cyclists you've met, or is there like a... a Is that a lot of the European people? Yes, like mostly Europeans. Yeah. Like English people for some reason a lot. I met at least. Spanish people in Latin America. Um, Germans. Yeah. Uh, Dutch, a few. And then kind of all like Swiss people. There okay. were a lot. And then it kind of evened out, but of the other countries in Europe and then Canadians I met a few Japanese people and Korean okay that's so pretty like why and then yeah. states not so many but states as well yeah. so this this countries are the most people wow and that's then really cool. the rest of the world I don't know I never met a guy from Africa cycling for example yeah or like from South America a few but very very little mm -hmm. In Central America, Mexicans, a few. That's cool. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Um, so what's your next? Are you, you said you had like another plan already. Yes, next year I want to cycle the Trans Alp, it's called. Okay. I actually wanted to do that a long time ago, but it didn't happen. But next year I want to do. So, where does that go from? So there is like one classical route which goes from southern Germany, it's called Oberstdorf, over like Wahlberg, Austria, into Switzerland, St. Moritz area, and then into Italy to Lago Garda, okay. Garda Lake. 
and that's a cl that's the classical rule. I mean, you could go everywhere if you want to, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But that's like kind of the continental divide trail. Yeah. Like someone did it, and then did a record, Maybe like the did same. like record it, like yeah, and described it and everything. And it's kind of a classic rule. Yeah. Um, and throughout your travels, have you been keeping like a blog or? No, I wanted to do a blog, so I started one, and then there was one entry. That's it. <laughs> and then in Mexico, it I wanted to do another blog, and there is one entry. That's it. Oh. <laughs> but I haven't had Facebook before. Mm -hmm. But then in Central America, like Colombia area, I recognized that without Facebook. I don't know for traveling, it's really handy. Yeah. yeah. You, you don't stay in contact per email for some reason, and per Skype, just with a few people, mostly from back home. Yeah. Um, so I started to create a new Facebook account, and since, like, Colombia, I have this Facebook account. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but I do have, like, kind of a picture block on Flickr, so okay. on Flickr there are my pictures. Yeah, he takes great photos. <laughs> so went to his camera. <laughs> just like from the south of Argentina, they are not on because I didn't knew about Flickr and like so many pe so many things just came while traveling. Yeah. Which like you meet people. I didn't knew that Warm Showers, you know this this hosting site WarmShowers.org. Did I tell you about that? Uh, no, anyway. You know, like couch surfing, right? Yeah. yeah. And then there is like a site for cycling tourists, so people who tour with the bike, mm -hmm. and it's called warmshowers.org. Okay. And I didn't know about that, so some guy in southern uh, Chile told me about it, and I never used it till Mexico actually. Yeah. And I never knew that like Casas de Ciclistas exists exist in like Latin America. What's it called? Casa de Ciclistas, so a place okay, where cyclists yeah, yeah. can come, cyclists. like you have your own house sometimes. Oh, okay, cool. Just for cyclists. And you don't have to pay? No. It's That's like great. kind of a donation thing because you use gas and water and stuff, so yeah. that they can maintain it there as for a donation, but if you really have no money or really low money, they, some, some other person who has a bit more pays a bit more, I guess. Yeah. So I didn't know about that. So another guy gave me this list of these cases, these listers, or like about like bike setups. I had my setup, and I don't know. That's like kind of a classical setup for pennies. Mm -hmm. Now I have a frame bag because I saw oh people have frame bags, and that's just more handy and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, and then also like about Flickr, I didn't know how Flickr works and mm -hmm. all that thing. So. It all came up. Is there anything else, like, if you had the ability to talk to yourself when you started, like, other than, like, Casa de Ciclistas and Warm Showers, is there anything else you'd tell yourself and be like, oh, you should make sure you do this and this. Start doing this now so you don't have to go through this learning process. Yeah, there would be a few things, I guess. Like, with the setup, for example, yeah. I would do a few things different. Um, and then maybe, like... Now I know this place is now it's more easy for me in Latin America to 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 pick out a place where I want to go, for example. Yeah. At the beginning, I didn't know. Like you know, like sites to see or. Yeah, places. sites, places to go, maybe. Mm -hmm. Where I would go, and mm, what else? No, besides that, I think I would do it the same. Yeah. And if anyone, maybe a bit more money. <laughs> <laughs> to have more money. <laughs> to have more money. Yeah. Uh, if someone who's listening is like really interested in doing like uh, Anchorage to Ushuaia or vice versa, like where do you think the best place to start researching would be? The best place to start researching. Uh, there are like a few s home pages, like from people I know, or also like from people I heard which you could re research, there is one, it's called Crazy Guy on a Bike. <laughs> <laughs> and there are like, this is like kind of a platform and people, there are like a lot of blogs on there. Mm -hmm. Or like, I, I, like, there is one guy I met, he cycled, like, he, it took him five years to go from Anchorage mm -hmm. to Ushuaia. Wow. Um, 
And here's a blog. It's called velofreedom.bike. Okay. Or there is another awesome blog which I really like. It's wildoutriding.com. This guy was also cycling five years. Wow. So there is a lot of information actually out there. Yeah. And some of these sites, I think, pop up if you do like, if you put in Google like Anchorage to Shwaya or like bike packing or I don't know. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of good resources out there. There are a lot of good resources that uh, they have really good blogs as well, information. Like, <laughs> but at the end, it's everyone has his own journey, I think. So yeah. you yeah. you can see like maybe you can learn about a setup, how you which which equipment you you need. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, and kind of that you have an idea about a budget. And that, like, if you have a budget, at at least twenty percent on this budget, mm -hmm. just for things you don't think about, yeah. like if you get sick, if something breaks, or if you need a flight or whatever. So, yeah, if you think that is your budget, put a bit on top of it. That would be my recommendation. And then start and do. Do you think getting that, your bike and ride it? Yeah. <laughs> like getting experience before, like if if you've like never done like a three month bike trip, and no. you're thinking about going on this two year bike trip, is that probably a bad I idea? Think or do you think everyone who has like a normal physical body without like bad handicaps, yeah, could do it. Everyone just get on the bike and go. Get on the bike and go, and then if you like it carry on if you don't like it. <laughs> so you're ready like it, yeah. like it, like it is pretty easy to, to quit right like all you have is a bike and your stuff so you can get to a city and yes. sell your bike and go like if you I, feel like it there was the, the, the beauty on like a cycling touring is like you could put a lot of money in best equipment you have but you can do it like I saw people like with a few hundred dollar bikes and like no pennies they had like plastic like how do you say like boxes plastic boxes kind of yeah thing. so really cheap yeah but it's what do you want to do with the, this bikes you can't go like really off road or mm -hmm. on dirt roads a lot because yeah. it will break really mm -hmm. soon but you can fix it everywhere like my stuff I have that's a bit more expensive and you see I have to ship it in stuff and yeah. it's a bit more complicated yeah so, but basically, it's like you can have you can travel like it with the with really low budget bike and really really high 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 yeah yeah cool. so you can it's like the other day like I was once talking with Ramon a guy I know a, a guy from Catalonia and he said Alex it's not about the bike. <laughs> that's half of the truth but it's it's a truth it's like it's, it's about you and it's a lot of mental. in the mind mental yeah do you think you've met more people who are also biking than you would have expected I met more people than I expected actually yeah. Yeah. Like, did you expect to meet less people because you were on a bike and camping and what like cyclists you mean yeah yeah I kind of meant cyclists uh, like. yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. I, I thought I will meet a lot of people, and I met a lot of people because you are really exposed. Like, you yeah. talk to nearly everyone <laughs> who's on the street. But, like, about cyclists, I thought not that many cyclists are around, yeah. actually. But there are a lot of cyclists around, actually. Yeah, that's so Or, cool. at least it seems to me, if you look at the world population <laughs> I think it's, it's a, a minority percent, yeah. <laughs> it's not that that's not many people but if you look like how into the cycling world I think it's quite a lot okay actually. yeah that's did, interesting did you ever ride your bike into an area like in a, maybe like a, a bigger city or something where you were like feeling a bit sketched out like a place where you're like oh maybe like scary <laughs> yeah like you're in like the hood and you're like mm -hmm. maybe I shouldn't have ridden my bike into here yeah uh, that happened like Mexico times. City <laughs> yeah Mexico City but also Medellin was once an area or like La Paz oh yeah La Paz yeah, is crazy 
sketchy. Not La Paz itself, like El Alto. Yeah. yeah. Up there. I felt kind of uncomfortable there. Yeah. Car. Or like in Peru, a few areas, and one area in Ecuador where I was like, uh, sure, I, I think I should get out here soon. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I was never, I, I've been never robbed. Never on this whole travel. Yeah. I haven't been robbed in, in a ho hostel or on the street. Mm -hmm. um, I lost quite a few things. <laughs> a, a few things I said to myself, I lost them. Who knows, maybe someone took them, but I didn't knew really. I yeah. couldn't tell. Did I lost them? Or did someone took that? Yeah. So I was like, no, I lost it. No. So, uh, beside that, nothing. Yeah. That's good. Lucky, then. lucky me, because I know people who who have been robbed, like yeah. cyclists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of the cyclists, you know, like did have many had bikes stolen? I know nobody personally whose bike was stolen. That's good. But I know like that people were robbed on their bikes, yeah. mm -hmm. and they were stolen all their equipment, but not the bike. <laughs> For some reason, <laughs> yes, I know that. That people get, like things get stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Do you have any questions? No, I don't. That was great, though. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for coming us. onto the podcast. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Stop it. All right. So that was the interview with Alex Kraus. Uh, we will post some links that he talked about as well as the link to his Flickr page on our show notes at www.theworldwanders.com. Um, as always, thanks for listening. And if you like the show, check us out on Facebook and Twitter, The World Wanders Podcast.